fifth graders happy monday uh happy lesson 12. i am so thrilled to tell you guys the learning target for lesson 12. we're multiplying the numbers that we're multiplying have decimals in them but don't be afraid we're going to use estimation to guide us whoa it's kind of deja vu right i feel like we've been doing this for a while i feel like you guys are getting really really comfortable with this multiplication stuff um and i just need you guys to remember that estimation <clears throat> is a wonderful tool that we can use to make sure our answers are reasonable especially uh, now that we're multiplying numbers that are a bit more complicated numbers that have decimals in them we're not scared it's okay bring it on let's do this here we go lesson 12 on wow 11 5 18 this lesson is a bit of a deja vu, but we're just going to go ahead and go for it. Um, we're kind of adding together things that we've been working on in the past, but we're applying them to a new type of expression that involves decimals. So we can totally handle it. So here we are going to estimate, then solving, uh, then solve using the standard algorithm. If area models are your jam, then go for it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and round and then do the standard algorithm and make sure that our estimate matches um, pretty closely as far as place values go with our final. Um, I'm particularly interested in B. I feel like A is a really great one, but I want to look at B. So I can zoom in. Okay, uh, 2.45 times 305. 2.45, we are going around to two. 305, we are going to round to 300. I think this rounding stuff is pretty E word for, oops, easy there. Let's say 300. Pretty E word for us. We are rounding. Make sure when you're rounding, these numbers are really simple, friendly numbers. So simple, in fact, that you can evaluate the expression in your head. Two times three, no problem. Six, and we're bringing along one, two zeros. Okay, so we're going to use a standard algorithm. And we are going to make sure that our final answer is really close to 600. Okay, so I am going to go ahead <coughs> and multiply through. I'm going to kind of blink, I'm going to kind of uh, scrunch my eyes up and pretend temporarily that the decimal point is not here. Yesterday, well actually today in class, we shifted our number out of decimal land and into whole number land and then we unshifted uh, after we had the final product and something else that we can do is just temporarily pretend that the decimal point isn't there and then when we're trying to figure out exactly where the decimal point is or should go we will use our estimated product as a guide so let's just go ahead and multiply through we have through we have five times five which is 25 Bring our 2 over. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 2 is 22. And then we have 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Awesome. 0 is our next batter up. 0 times anything is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, just make sure when we're multiplying this number through, we recognize what place value it is it's in it's in the th it's in the hundreds place value so what we're looking at here actually let's get rid of these numbers because we've used them let's get rid of all the numbers that we've used okay so th this is a 300 we're looking at 300 times 5 feel free to work that out on the side 300 times 5 is equal to 1500 of course we're not going to put this entire number down here but we do have to respect establish whoa 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 oh my gosh this is funny but the button on my pen has been pushed don't push oh dear okay <laughs> that's really silly um let me try to erase that that is really silly i have these two very as you guys can see highly sensitive buttons on my pen that i kind of forget that are there because i never use them ay 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 I'll just re rewrite that to five. Um, and as you guys can see, when I accidentally push them, it is not pretty. Okay, 
Oops, let me rewrite that. Goodness sakes. What I was trying to say is that we cannot write our whole 1500 out here, um, but what we do need to establish is the fact that we are in the hundreds. So we are going to put down two zeros because anything times uh, something that is in the hundreds place value is going to be end in two zeros. I can I can put my five down, and you guys can see how everything is really li well lined up. The five is going directly be below the three, and then I'm going to carry our one over. So that's one, five, zero, zero, fifteen hundred. And this, you guys, I know is a really tricky because we're writing the number backwards, and even separating it. This is not the standard way that we usually write numbers out. So that's why I like to kind of write the number on the side, think about our place value, and then think about what we need to carry. So now we've established our place value. Beautiful. We can just think about three times four. Three times four, I know that one, it's 12. Plus one is 13. So I'm going to continue to stay lined up. Now we have three times two is six plus one is seven. Awesome. Let's go ahead and add up our three partial products, you guys. Keep in mind one of our partial products are zero, so don't overthink that one. This column's pretty easy, it's five. And then we have a two, I like this. Two plus zero plus five is seven. One plus zero plus three is four. And then we have our seven. Okay, so now we're looking at seven, four, seven, two, five. I love how this two just merged in with the arrow. Our final product needs to be close to 600. Now I have to think about, oh, where am I putting my decimal point? Let's just start over here. Would putting a decimal point, oh, I feel like it's another color. Would putting a decimal point right here make sense? Absolutely not. That would be 74,725. Eh. Would putting a decimal point right here make sense? Absolutely not. That would be 7,472 and 5 tenths. That's not close to 600. What about right here? Hmm, that's an interesting choice. 747 and 25 hundredths versus an estimate of 600. My highest place value is hundredths. My highest place value here is hundreds. Okay, well, I think that's an interesting option. Let's just keep looking and make sure that we're completely confident that that's where the decimal should go. 74, should we put the decimal point here? That would make this number 74 and 725 uh, thousandths. Nope, those numbers are nowhere close to one another. Okay, fine, what about here? Seven and 4,725 ten thousandths? Heck no. You guys are exactly right. This is exactly where the decimal should be. This number and our estimate are fairly close as far as place value goes. I like it. Let's look at another one, guys. You guys are going to just take a look at one more problem here. I could not resist this one. It kind of reminded me of my previous life. Uh, <clears throat> so little known fact. This is especially um, true in modern art, like more abstract paintings that are large, very large scale paintings. Art galleries often, I wouldn't necessarily often, but I will, I'm going to make a correction here. And this is, this is new. <clears throat> new artwork, not like old masters. Art galleries sometimes price paintings by the square inch. If a painting measures 22.5 inches by 34 inches and costs $4.15 per square inch, what is the selling price for the painting? Really interesting idea here, you guys. Let's go ahead and draw a picture so that we can understand what is going on in this problem. Um, so this is a painting. Maybe I'll put like a fancy frame on it. Often artwork is not sold with a frame. It's just the painting itself. And maybe I'll do like a really cool abstract painting here. Da, 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 what do you guys think so far? Would you pay big bucks for this? It's a work of art. We will start the, big, the bidding at, uh, I guess we'll see what the price is here in a second. Okay, so there's our painting. We have very specific diameter, or um, not diameters, <laughs> we have very specific measurements for this painting. It is 
34 inches tall. And then it is 22.5 inches wide. We are looking for the um, area. Colors. It doesn't explicitly say that we're looking for the area, but we've talked about this measurement, square inch, literally means how many, if we were to put a grid across this gorgeous painting, it literally means how many one by one square inches can we fit inside this painting. And they're using that to determine the pricing of this painting. So because I see this square inches, um, I immediately know that we are talking about <clears throat> area. You'll also see square inches look like this, inches squared. So area, as you guys may recall, hopefully, A equals length times width. A equals L times W. So the expression for the area of this painting, this masterpiece, is going to uh, look like the area for this is going to be 34 times 22.5. So we can just go ahead and do some estimation uh, so that we can have a guiding product so we can make sure that our final product is pretty uh, reasonable. So let's go ahead and round 34 to 30 and we're going to round 22.5 to 20. Two super friendly numbers. Three times two is six and then we're bringing one, two zeros along to the party. I say they're super friendly because we can do this really easily, easily and really quickly in our head. Now what we need to do, my friends, is go ahead and use the standard algorithm and multiply these numbers together. Just stop, stacked one on top of another. Keep in mind, you guys, when we're multiplying, we don't have to align place values because really what we're doing here is we're finding 34 copies of 22.5. And we're doing that in a very strategic way. First, we're, we're going to find 34 copies of 5 tenths, 2 ones, and 2 tenths. Moreover, we're going to look for 4 copies of 5 tenths, 4 copies of 2 ones, 4 copies of 2 tenths, and then we look for 30 copies of 5 tenths, 2 ones, and 2 tenths. Okay, so let's get to it. 4 times 5 is 20 carry our two over. Four times two is uh, eight plus two is ten. We have another one being carried over. Four times two is eight plus one is nine. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and get rid of the numbers that we've already used. Now we're going to move to our tenths place value and multiply 30 times five. 30 times five is 150 because three times five is 15 and then we're going to bring a zero to the party. Now we've established our place value, so I can just look at 3 times 2. We know that this is a 30 times a 20, but because we've established our place value, we could just do very quick multiplication. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and then we have a 3 times 2 again, which is 6. Let's go ahead and add up our two partial products. We're going to look at a 0, a 5, 9 plus 7 is 16, 1 plus 6 is 7. Okay, so we have 7650. Let's think about our decimal placement. Um, we want our final product to be pretty close to 600. I didn't really grab a color there, did I? Oh, we're in Turks. Um, would it make sense to put our decimal point here so that our final product would be 7650? Nope. What about here, you guys? 765? Well, 765 is pretty close uh, as far as place values go to 600 because we our largest place value is, seven, is uh, in hundreds here and here. So that is exactly where we're going to place our uh, decimal points. However, we are not finished with the problem yet. This is the area, the area of this gorgeous work of art is 765 square inches. What we want to know is <clears throat> what is the selling price for this painting? If this painting is 765 square inches and one square inch, just one of these, costs $4.15, 
what does the entire painting cost? Well, that's going to look like this as far as the expression goes, you guys. That is going to look like 765, 765 times 4.15. And this, my friends, is your secret word. Not this, but the answer to this. I need you to evaluate this expression. I need you to use the standard algorithm and use the strategies that we've been working on and find the final answer to 765 times 4 and 15 hundredths. 765 times 4.15, the answer is the secret word. So you're not going to bring in a word tomorrow. You're going to bring in the answer to this expression and check that in in the morning. Okay, have fun, you guys. I uh, can't wait to continue this amazing multiplication practice. I will see you in the morning.